Hey, hello, hi everybody. How you doing? Welcome to Bocce Talk. Andrew, the security guy here. I'm not Gordo the Texar, unfortunately. He's not here. He's gone to watch his grandson play San Jose State tomorrow morning. Go, go Warriors. We're, we're looking for a good outcome from that game from those guys. Um, but I do have a very special guest in the studio with me today, Mr. Sid Kintaw. Thank you for taking some time out to come and spend thank you Andrew spend your Friday after lunch with us sir I appreciate you being here love being here um, so <clears throat> Sid has uh, quite a, a, a varied history that I think um, you guys can enjoy and we're going to talk specifically about some of the things that brought him here um, that uh, revolve a little bit around the VA and and uh, their, their good work that they do here uh, for folks so uh, yeah we've got a little bit of a soldier story title today and uh, I'll have a little security <laughs> minute for you after the break okay. Uh, as well. So, Sid, welcome. Thank you know, you. Our, our format, we like, to, we like to try to give our guests a little bit of, uh, of history, you know, about, about your background. You know, did you, did you just land here yesterday or did you grow up here? You know, so start where you're comfortable and kind of give, give us your history okay. in Hawaii. So, because uh, yours, is, yours is, is good. So I give you the five minute tell the, no, five give, minute me, give version. me the Give me the 12 <laughs> minute version, then we'll take a break. Okay. <laughs> uh, born and raised here. Awesome. And uh, uh, whereabouts? Uh, actually, I, I was born in Kaimuki. Okay. And then I ended up ending up in Kalihi, and from Kalihi to Kulio'o. Okay. And wow. um, had a little bit of uh, uh, a transition in my youth, and I ended up back at Foster Village. But I went to Kamehameha Schools. Okay. And, Excellent. Uh, from Excellent. Kamehameha. We've had a lot of Kamehameha grads on the show. Imua Kamehameha. There you go. And so we, um, from there, college on the, on the West Coast, I went to Woodbury uh, University. It's headquartered in New Burbank. I was okay. going to be a, an accountant. An accountant. How, how did accountant. that strike you? Like, not many, oh, it not was, many young men even actually grow up. From these. It was boring. I found it to be boring, so I said, I'm going to get into sales management. So I got into ah. sales management, finished up in college. Uh, that was in 1966. Okay. Well. Height, of the, height of the Vietnam conflict, and I was 1A. And I decided, well, hmm, can't get a job. I was going to go to Europe for a while, but I said, no, I'm just going to come back, volunteer for the draft, and, to, and then couple months later I was the property and of Uncle is, Sam. Was 1A at that time, what, what would that have, would that mean you were like awaiting being drafted or what is a 1A You status? are immediately eligible for service. Okay, so, so so then you would wait to be called or you could just go ahead and sign up and say let me go? Oh, once I told them I was ready, the orders were cut and the wheel went. So, and, and did you do that from here? or off I did that from here. No, okay. I, I, came, I came back to Hawaii, went in, I wanted to go in with uh, a uh, Hawaii contingent. Sure. And so did my training at Fort Ord and what have you, and then my service for two years. Uh, came back out, lived on the uh, mainland for a couple of years. Then I came back and I worked uh, for a, a small startup company called Safety Equipment Design Company. Okay. And uh, I'd worked for the owner during my uh, high school years doing part time work and what have you. So eventually I bought the name and the assets out and. Oh, you bought it from the owner? Right. Okay. And so in 1978, I took it for 25 years. Um, folks might know it as uh, Safety Equipment and Sign Company, Sun Industries, Hawaii. We were purchased by Grace Pacific in 2003. It's now called GP Road wow. Solutions. And then so, Grace got purchased by A and B. Yeah. So, so going back to, because you jumped, you jumped very quickly there. Okay. From from coming home, you get you got you went down and signed up. So was that where was it at Shafter? Where did people sign up back in then? But how did you? Where'd you enlist at? Oh, I guess that was a ways. Work. I think it was uh, down at Fort De Russi. Oh, at Fort De Russi, yeah, okay. Because that's where I came back from my R&R. &R. Okay. But, uh, yeah, and it then was, you were it was infantry? Very, uh, 25th, 25th Infantry Division. Okay, 25th yep. Infantry. And, and it was um, still here. a wonderful experience. Uh, back then, I weighed 172 pounds. Okay. Uh, slightly lighter than I am now. And, uh, I think about 175 today, so. Sure, sure, <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, it, it was an experience. Uh, I think government, uh, I mean, uh, military service is something to be very proud of for all of us sure, that are Americans. To, to take that on. People, I think a lot of people have lost that back, back at that time when there was, you know, there was a draft and eligible people, you know, it was, it was an honorable thing to go. And I think the military's, you know, sometimes lost some of that luster for some people, depending on who you talk to. Times have changed. And they don't, I don't think they know how good it is, you know. I learned a lot of stuff. Every two weeks I got a paycheck. There All you go. I had to do is what I was told. What about you? Oh, did you have yeah. to make decisions or did you just... <laughs> I got a paycheck and I got free meals. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it could go wrong. But Best job I ever had. It, it, it was. And uh, at that time, you know, in my early 20s, it was, it yeah. was something. And it was different. But, you know, you, it, it's, it's hard to describe uh, defending America and coming home 
and being part of the traditions that go on each year. Sure. Lest we not forget those that are still over there listed as missing in action or POWs. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it, it, it is a, a truly something that I'm proud of. And I think there are many Americans who um, maybe don't recognize the true value of our men and women in uniform. But I'll tell you what, we would be a much worse off place if we didn't have the military that we need today. Sure, and the pride is living here. I mean, it's it's, it's all around us, obviously, right? Sure so I love it. Yep. You got the 75th for Pearl coming up, and mm -hmm. still some of those guys that served aboard uh, the Arizona are coming. So that's kind of right interesting on. stuff too. So let's see, you were there, so 66. And you were on in country. I was in country 67, 68. 67, 68. Right. So hot times there. And whereabouts were you? I was in Coochie. Okay. And operating between Coochie and Cambodia. And what Florida. kind of? What kind of did you? Would you? Did you up with uh, like <coughs> working on the helicopters, or would you end up? What kind of duties did you? Uh, actually, I, I went over there with grandeurs of being a a, a security uh, embassy guard. Okay. For, I was an MP, and uh, I, I ended up with the 25th. Uh, MP company with the 25th Infantry Division, but then it was different. Everybody was spread out to support all the units within the division. Sure, all, all so, over the country by that time. Yeah, I mean, we yeah, were everywhere. Yeah. It, well, yeah, I mean, it operated uh, throughout Kuchi in their immediate area, but uh, it was an interesting year. It was in country for a year, and um, glad to have gotten home. Sure. Got off the plane, walked away, and didn't, didn't so look back. Tell why were they bring you back mainland probably, yeah? Uh, you, Travis. Okay, Travis. I, I, I separated at Travis, and um, how was that? How was that getting home when you had, when you were finally safe and no more bullets flying? You know, if you're, if you're it, it was it was interesting. I got off the plane and, and uh, dropped my cigarettes in the trash can, stopped smoking oh. then, and uh, and I've been home, been going back since. And and again, uh, back then you were just glad to be home. And did so? Did the service just end? Did you did you out process? How did it? Uh, you, you out process there. Uh, Travis, and then you're okay. and then you're in this active reserve for a number of years, and, oh, then, and then you go you go completely out. And um, so, were you active reserve here in Hawaii, or no? I okay. was uh, in in California. Okay. Because I what happened? I, I I separated in Travis. I'd fallen in love in my college days before I went to ah. Vietnam, but then married, and I stayed there okay. before I came back here to to work for the same guy I worked for. In high school, all those you know? years. So, and, uh, were you always were you entrepreneur? Did you have that mindset, or were you kind of just looking looking for work when you got back under him, or did you know that maybe you'd have an opportunity to to take that from him already, or was that was a uh, mature business? Yes, I, I I knew that I wanted to be on my own, mm -hmm. uh, and eventually I was going to do it. But when I came back and worked for the uh, Alan Perry was his name. Um, he uh, was growing his business. He wanted somebody to come in and be his second in command and I said sure uh, we we put it together once it didn't work I left the company went back to California and he called me back again hmm. uh, we put it try to put it together uh, it didn't really work that time either hmm. and so at that point he was trying to sell part of the company to uh, another firm and I see. so I decided that well I would go with that deal if it happened and it, it didn't happen, so I had to make a decision. So I went in the next day and I said, listen, it didn't work, deal didn't work, so I'll do it. I didn't have any money, but uh, <laughs> we, put a, we put a deal together. Was he and surprised? He was surprised, wow. but uh, I started off on uh, September 1st, 1978, and I sold it 25 years later to the day wow. to Grace Pacific. That's a guy who planned his exit straight as well. <laughs> did... Uh, so, so you had, so you had, did have that. You had that sales and marketing background from college, right? And you Correct. Brought, and you had leadership, of course, from the army. Uh -huh. So you you brought that to the table. What, what was his background? Was he good at running a business, or was he? You know, some 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 owners are like good at. They have the skill sets, but they don't have the vision for business. You know, and I was just kind of. It's interesting because it was a, a business that was chemical toilets. Okay. Uh, and then he had a safety uh, line, and then he also did sign, um, uh, personal protection. Okay. Uh, sales okay. and and so what happened was I bought the assets of the signage and the personal protection and barricade rentals and uh, and the name okay and then I launched on that the reason he wanted to get out was uh, he made it made enough so he wanted to just sell off and retire and raise macadamia nuts on the big gun. nice and uh, yeah it was nice unfortunately uh, um, that was short-lived he passed away 
two oh. years two years after selling me the business. Wow, well, at least you got and a couple years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, an exit strategy is so important in any business, sure. as you know. Well, I like that. The other thing that you brought up is like, and it's something that the business community should pay attention to is it doesn't, things don't always work the first time in business. So you try a few times and you finally got something that worked out. Yeah, it didn't work out as well for him. He may have liked the exit sooner, but you know, mm -hmm. the fact that the first buyout didn't, didn't work out, the second one didn't work out, but that came your way. So, you know, business, there's always right. ways to do things if you keep working at it, you know. Yeah, you, you, That's a good you, story. You, you, you have to not, you, you, if you go into something knowing you don't know, you're better off. Yeah. <laughs> because I think if, if most business people knew what they were heading into, you're either undercapitalized, under adequately staffed, there's always insurmountable hurdles. And you have two o'clock meetings with yourself in the morning trying to what in the world I get myself into. Uh, it sounds like my story. Now we're now we're talking my story. <laughs> That's right. I just said I can do this. I have a credit card. <laughs> oh yeah. Been broke ever well, since. Well, boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> payroll can just swell up on you as fast. Oh. And benefits are swelling up for you. And you know, and I, I I feel for the businesses here in Hawaii. In this morning's paper. What HMSA is hikes that have never been seen before. Sure. And, and Kaiser, I think. But it's going to impact everyone Every business. and and the little guy that's participating now is going to suffer even yeah greater. and we so, ultimately and ultimately it impacts the consumers right because we, we've got to pass that on that cost of, you know there's no if all of our insurance rates go up just like when gas goes up all that stuff so you know especially in the services industries like i'm at you know right but it's uh the consumers tend to get a little bit of a they get a little pass because they've already got quotes in hand and you got to honor those <laughs> Sure. And then so we don't get to, so if they don't buy soon, their prices will go up. Saying, so, you know, how construction changes. And, yep. You know, you were in the, uh, the services business, right? You guys installed and set up the barricades as well as you sold equipment, right? So yeah, we, we, we were multifaceted. We yeah. installed, we supplied uh, on, the, on the construction side of it in our company. And then we also uh, did, you know, safety uh, consulting. Sure. For the, for for the, the city, way. for the... Tra like for the, the city, bar for contractors, for the roadways, everything, and, what have you, right? and, and sure. so it's, uh, and you know, like in anything in, in Hawaii, you have a, a populace that is rather restricted by, you know, our island state uh, situation. So, you know, you want to do complete selling to your customers. Yeah. You know, don't try to get them all new. Get all new ones. Just make sure you maintain the relationship and you can do a good job for your customers that you already have. That's right. That's always great advice. So hold that thought a minute. We're going to take a break. Go pay a few. Uh, bills, as Gordo likes to say, and we'll be back in just a minute with Sidkin Talk. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of uh, Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people are collaborating and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Hey, aloha. Welcome back to Bachi Talk. Uh, Andrew, the security guy here. Uh, Gordo, the tech star, is not with us today, but Sid Cantal's in the house. Thanks for showing up, Sid. Yep. And uh, I got a little bit of a security minute for you because something came across my desk, so I thought I'd talk about this. Uh, we've, we've been preaching for this active shooter event, you know, the Run, Hide, Fight program that came out uh, from the FBI, and it's great advice. And um, uh, I just wanted to add to that that there's some, some news, some studies have sort of been done of, since that time, which has been, that's maybe two years ago we sort of rolled that program out. We've talked about that periodically here. Um, some of the newer stuff is trying to say that, you know, maybe, maybe uh, the hide part is not really the best thing to be doing. So um, obviously run, you know, if you can exit a situation safely, exit it immediately and do not stop exiting until you encounter law enforcement. Um, and remember, you know, don't have stuff in your hands like your cell phone. They can't tell what that is. So make sure you, that you're nice and clean for officers that are responding. Um, but the, the hide part of that is, is maybe questionable. And so it may be better to take the group that you're with. And um, uh, you may have more success swarming an individual and overwhelming them. Um, and there's been some work done now to indicate that 
if you have the right people in the room who are willing to do that, that you may all be a lot more successful than waiting for uh, trying to hide from a, a gunman who's got a lot of ammo and enough time to stay in a place and root people out. So obviously, um, just wanted to introduce that idea that uh, this is some of the new stuff that people are starting to talk about. Um, so if you find yourself in that active shooter situation, um, again, hopefully you've done some of this training, you've done some of this training with your employees, um, and run, hide, fight should be looked at, but that hide piece you might want to might want to pay a little more attention to, and, and uh, if you find yourself in that situation, look at the folks around you and decide if you could overwhelm that person maybe by just swarming on them. Um, so thanks for that. So Sid, thanks for thanks for being being with us today, and we sure. were we were talking a little bit about service, we were talking a bit about business. Um, we didn't get quite get quite up to some of your political work that you did. So let's talk about the, the community service from a guy who built a business for 25 years, right? Then sold it, quite successful. Didn't have to help out, but you got the call. So I got the call. along with our, uh, the Texar, who also served and worked for Mufi and for Peter Carlisle, you, yes. you ended up helping out your community that way too. So more service that you did. Give us a, give us a sense of how you got involved you know, with uh, yes, City Hall. After the acquisition <laughs> by Gray Specific. You were um, flush. Uh, Flush, you know, and paid my taxes. Ready to retire? Or ready. No, no I, <laughs> actually, I was, we structured the deal so that I'd stay on for a couple of years. But okay. right after that, Bob Wilkinson, who was president of Grace Pacific at the time, says, I want to have a meeting with you up at the Greek Pacific Club. So I went to see him, and he said, uh, I want you to come down to Capo Lea. I want you to work on marketing for the overall oh. corporation. I said, well, okay, well, can I think about it? He says, sure. Um, let me know tomorrow morning when you can move. <laughs> and that was wow. uh, you know, it, it, no, no pressure. Yeah. And so it, it, we we did that, and I actually, and that was in 2004, and we were getting ready to open up the Kapa'a plant, and I invited Duke Bainham at the time and Mufi Henneman at the time to come, okay. and and my job was to coordinate that event and to uh, let them know that we wanted a pavement preservation program. It would save the people, of the state of Hawaii. Uh, a lot of money, and we would have the improved roadways that we've been aiming for even today. Forever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we never and seem so to get quite The get pavement there. preservation program was the, was a hot item. And so Mufi came. Mr. Bainham didn't, unfortunately, didn't show up. And after that, um, you know, I just went about my work. Mufi okay. got elected and what have you. And then I got talked into saying from a, chaps at the Pacific Club where we work out, Oh, you ought to submit your resume to to movie. They're looking for good guys, and so I said, "Well, you know, why not? I, you know, if it's okay with Grace Pacific." And sure enough, uh, one thing led to another, and I became director of enterprise services for under the movie Hanneman administration. And so our audience may not know what all that encompasses. So give, okay. give them a, you had the zoo. Yeah, yeah, the and enterprise uh, services yeah. <laughs> is the is supposed to be the the enterprising part of government. Uh, we compete. That's the vision there. Yeah, part. We, 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 we compete. We competed with. Uh, regular other businesses for ticket sales. The Honolulu Zoo was under our, um, my purview, the six city golf courses. Um, we, we also had the Blaisdell Center mm -hmm. complex, the Shell, uh, and then we had all of the outsourced city concessions. And so, so you were the guy to see if there was a concert in town? I would be the guy to see if there was a concert <laughs> in town. And um, it, was a, it was a wonderful experience because our operating budget was from through ticket sales. Oh, okay. And it was a, we were the only department that did that. Uh, so then you generated the, your own revenue. We, we, we generated our own revenue. And then our capital budget, though, came out of the regular city budget. I see. And, and it was still supplemented if we, if we were short in some areas on the, on the operating. But basically, we had to plan and... and uh, look at ways to create revenue stream uh, at a good cost and have that customer satisfied. Wow. And we did, a, we, I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah, we had a pretty good team. A while, and, and I told the mayor, because he wanted us to do an asset review at the time. Mm -hmm. So we did the asset review early in 2005 and I came back and I said either shut it down or invest in it. Mm -hmm. Because if okay. you don't invest in it, then we're not going to be able to accomplish our mission to have things. And you know, one of the biggest things that we did was to bring Lion King mm -hmm. to, to wow. the Honolulu and, and among other uh, acts. But um, it was with that thought in mind that we wanted to expand the horizon for a lot of people in Hawaii that may not leave the islands, but we could bring outside of the islands to Hawaii. Nice. And so it worked out pretty good. And I, I, uh, I served for MUFI. Um, he re got reelected, and then I, a short time with Kirk Caldwell, and he assumed after Mufi resigned. Mm -hmm. And then when 
Cor Corwell um, didn't get reelected at the time, I went and worked for Peter Carlyle. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, seeing where the things were headed for the islands and what have you, I, I became a bit disenchanted, mm -hmm. quite honestly. And so I decided to move to New Zealand. Nice. And, and, and I, I don't want to say self-imposed exile, but I thought it would be a better lifestyle. And New Zealand's got a lot of good things going for itself. You know, um, you want to re-register your car, you go down to the post office. Mm. You know, if you want to make, uh, get, get your license uh, renewed, you go to a, an outsourced uh, AA uh, facsimile. Uh, their parks and recreation, it's all outsourced. The roads mm. are outsourced. So there's a lot of... Um, uh, private contracting that goes on on the maintenance side for New Zealand. It seems to work. I mean, we're we're happy with where we are. But uh, coming back, we my wife and I come back on a regular basis. Some of it for VA. Yeah. So let's talk about what's got you. What, how that <laughs> caught you at the club this yeah. this week? Said uh, Sid, what's up? Yeah. So what happened is that um, uh, I did some initial screening with the VA many years ago, thanks to uh, a friend of mine. But then. My wife said, you know, you should go back up there and talk to them about, you know, filing a disability claim or what have you. So I really, I was just glad I left the plane in 2000, back in 1968. And so I went up there and lo and behold, by the time I filled out all the paperwork, I said, yeah, you do have something legitimate. And uh, they gave me a rating and they gave me a pension. And you're covered. <clears throat> and so now the, the problem with being covered, though, is that they say I was in the foreign medical program. And the foreign medical program, you deal with Denver. And when I called Denver, they said, no, no, that's not what we, it was a lot of confusion. Wow. And, and that's foreign said, medical just because you're living in New Zealand now. Because I live okay. in New Zealand. And uh, there's, a, there's a VA center in Australia. There's a VA center in the Philippines. Okay. But there's nothing in New Zealand. So when I would call, I'd kind of get shuffled around. Interesting. <clears throat> and, and finally... I found a wonderful person in, the, in Pittsburgh who assigned me to the VA center here in Honolulu. And as I, I've, I've it, it's been a migration process. I see. And how, how long, how long did you have to work on this? Uh, since, uh, roughly eight months. Since Tara, eight, Tara months. nudged you a little bit right, and said, yeah. go, go see what you got. Go see eight, if you got some months. benefits. Actually, I needed to get my eyes checked. And she says, Get up there and get your eyes checked, and, and I've had that done, and we're 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 off and running. And, and but, you're in and out of Honolulu a few times a year. Yeah, a few times sure. a year. But uh, what I would like to say about the the VA is that don't believe everything you hear um, about the negative impact. You know, there 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 are things wrong with the VA like any large agency, and that starts at the top. We're going to let those guys take care of it, hopefully. But what I'd like to say is that the people here at Tripler have been so helpful in trying to help me sort out my problems. Okay. And I'd like to, in, in particular, I can tell you, uh, if there are veterans out there that, that really are, are kind of lost in the shuffle and get frustrated, uh, you know, call up there, try to speak to a caseworker. Uh, I ended up with a, a, a young a lady named Inga McLaughlin, who I, I don't mind saying did an outstanding job. She's followed up on my appointments. And I really feel that now I've finally uh, gotten into a program uh, for good health maintenance where I'll be coming in once a year and um, making the appointments for what I need. Wow, that's and awesome. It, it's worked out. And, and, I, and I can honestly say out there that the, the VA does work. And, and, and I, I can't thank the folks up at the, the VA Center here enough. And so when you, so when you, did you have an appointment or did you have to come and sort of register and then they gave you an appointment and I go back and go back or once you, once you were headed here, you, you were able to arrange your, your onboarding with the, the folks here or how the, how the, it, it took it me a few weeks to sort out where I was going. Okay. And it finally ended up with Inga because they didn't know the guy from New Zealand. Well, what do we do with him? I see. You know, and it was kind of that catch 22. So finally, uh, a decision was made. We, we chatted more about it <clears throat> because some things can be covered in New Zealand, but there's some things that couldn't be covered in New Zealand mm -hmm. through their medical care system. So um, in, in talking to Inga, she did her efforts to convince people that, hey, this is a guy that's caught between the, the rock and yeah, a hard spot. One that could fall so through. So they, they made a decision where they assigned me a primary care doctor, which was really the stumbling right. block. Uh, and I've got that secure now. And so now, with that assignment, even though I'm not in state, 
uh, I will be able to be treated here at Tripper. Yeah, so I'm wondering, do you have any idea how many people that aren't, you know, that aren't, don't live in Hawaii that get treatment here? I imagine that because there's probably several spread around Korea and Guam and all the islands and, you know, like guys that, that exited that, you know, just don't live here anymore but live out in the Pacific somewhere. I, I had no idea. I, I mean, again, it would, be, it would be interesting to know what, the, what, what is occurring. I ended up being contacted by the U.S. Embassy oh. in New Zealand when I filed my initial claim. Huh, okay. It took about nine months to get that process. So that process. State Department came back to you. Correct. Wow. And so what happened, they said, here's what it is. You need to get a physical here. You send it back to me, and we'll take it from there. And, and I did that in the course of uh, 45 days. And I think 90 days later, they came back with a, a rating and, and, and with an announcement, you know, what my compensation would be. And then from there, the treatment side of it, kind of fell off the wagon okay until this trip here so you got here we're, we're we're in good shape here and so your primary so just your primary care physician so because they're military they may be stationed here but maybe they maybe he gets repositioned some to mainland hospital could be would you have to go to the va office there or they would just give you a new one here i would be reassigned you know. one here okay so, so. That's, that seems really reasonable i mean it seems like a good especially as someone who had hadn't engaged the system you hadn't you hadn't been involved with the VA system at all. So for yeah. quite a while, you you know you obviously weren't weren't in need of it. But now you said, hey, I might have some benefits. Let me go check on it, and you worked your way back in. So I think it's no, amazing. It was it was a really good stroke of uh, uh, fate, I say. You know, my wife bugged me about it, and I didn't think anything would come of it, but it did. And and I'll tell you, it does work. The system does work. Don't give up. Any of you veterans that get frustrated, just Keep asking for support. There you go. You heard it here on Abachi Talk. The VA is doing a lot of great stuff out there. Don't give up. It might be a little painful at first. But Sid, thank you so much. Thanks for coming in today. Pleasure. Thanks for sharing your story with us. Okay. Uh, soldier story with Sid Kuntal. Uh, we'll see you next week. Um, I don't think I'll be here, but the Texar will be back. So aloha, everybody. Oh, we have a thing we do. One, two, three. We say, how are you doing? How are you doing? Thank you.